Ha! I have it! It's mystery. It's essence. It's truth. It's letters! Mythology in cinema hasn't always hit the landing. Even Ridley Scott failed to pull it off. And quickly, I'm sorry for offending anyone, but with the absence of any historical or archaeological evidence supporting the Moses story, I'm classifying it as mythology. Anyway, the problem with mythology in cinema is never how it does at the box office. It's to do with how it's treated. Even in Hercules, one of the better films based off classical mythology, the original Greco material is tarnished by a lack of insight. Hades, for example, was rarely depicted as an evil tyrant wishing to usurp his brother Zeus, who is always in fact described as a righteous leader of the underworld who respected his duty. And obviously the problem doesn't just revolve around a lack of research, but also the studio's temptations to indulge in the more shallow aspects of the mythology, granting all their budgets towards CGI spectacles, which only serves to highlight the flashier aspects of myths, whilst never looking underneath the surface of what it's all about. This tactic is one that's pretty hard to condemn from a monetary perspective, as ultimately flashy mythical beasts means people running to the cinema to occupy their eyes rather than their minds, but is always leaving the films lacking. And that's where Robert Eggers comes in. I remember when I first watched The Lighthouse in cinemas, the end credits rolled, and the one behind me muttered, what the fuck did I just watch? Which isn't an unfair assessment. You're fond of me, lobster! The way Edgar's constructs his stories carrying undertones of the fantastical almost encourages criticism labelling it as pretentious. Marry that with the overarching narrative in the lighthouse about two lighthouse keepers slowly going insane together, and you've got an imagery packed shitstorm that revels in controlled incomprehension. But let's unpack how Robert Eggers uses mythology and folklore to aid his stories, rather than letting it take over them. Perhaps the most glaring aspect of Eggers' work is his dedication to immersing the audience within the world of his stories. Whether it is the use of syntax or colloquialisms from the eras his films are set within, or his practical approach to cinematography, only using the light from nature or candles, the sources which would be available to his characters. This attention to truth grounds his stories in a realistic sphere in comparison to other films that utilise mythology as plot points. Not only is this a way of heightening the horror elements of the witch and the lighthouse, but it also allows the world of the story to be a separate, breathing entity to the mythology. Therefore, the mythology can only permeate into these realistic worlds, as opposed to the story and the story world relying directly upon the mythology to shape it. Mythology is ambivalent. By definition, it is an oral history that dates back thousands of years, and it is thus a web of related but often contradictory stories. And through this inconsistency, that is inherent in a tradition that lacks proper documentation and was victim to individual embellishment, the mythology is implicit. There are many tales of many different origins that imply that witches are inherently evil, a wicked scourge of mankind. And we have seen many iterations of witches in cinema which adhere to these parts of the mythology. And ultimately, whilst many of these iterations can be entertaining, they also appear flat. Don't get me wrong, in The Witch, the titular characters exhibit some of the implied evil characteristics that Eggers will have found in the original source material of New England folk tales. I mean, this deal away babies, long possessed children, and inspire murder. All pretty evil, but Eggers subtly, implicitly, layers more onto the essentially faceless witches. One could simply view them as a community of women thriving in a world that is A. Brutal and cruel B. Works against the interests of women and C. Constantly shows the degeneration of society on a micro and macro scale. In the final act when Thomason joins the witches after her did she have it or did she not conversation with the satanic goat Black Philip, it can be argued that this is not a condemnation of the witches but an approval as our peak into their society is the only instance of ecstasy in the entire film. Obviously, it's pretty easy to argue the other side of the fence, that this is a culmination of Thomasin's fall arc, as she finally succumbs to the witch's malevolent powers. But the purpose of this video, and of Edgar's work, I believe, is not to provide the answers, it's to seek out the implications and explore the possibilities. I think that has been evidently lacking in other films that deal with classical mythology as they indulge in an explicit and shallow interpretation. But the benefit of Edgar's approach is that he is able to make the mythology mean something else. Back to the witches. 
Are they a heightened magical representation of the evil within mankind? Or are they an embodiment of the fears and anxieties of Tomzin's family and all community that have arisen out of their Puritan beliefs? Are they an example of female power in an age where femininity and feminine power was repressed? Or are they simply a weapon used by Eggers to illuminate the real conflict in the story? The tension between the family. How about in the lighthouse? Is the mermaid real or is she just there to show what a magical place this island and lighthouse really are? And what about old Thomas? Was he a sea god all along? A twisted mix of Poseidon and a merman? And was it the lighthouse that made him so? We can't know for sure. Eggers implies many things and answers next to none. So let's take a look at a specific example, young Thomas representing the Greek titan Prometheus. A trickster god, Prometheus famously stole fire of Zeus, who had kept it hidden from the humans after Prometheus pulled another trick on him at a feast. Upon the humans receiving the fire, they were granted intelligence, and little Zeus got angry, unleashed Pandora in a box of evils upon the world before chaining Prometheus to a rock in Tartarus where an eagle pecked out his liver on a daily basis. So the parallels are obvious. Young Thomas is a trickster. He holds back his real identity and the fact that he let a man die before retreating to a life at sea. He also plots to see the lighthouse's light, guarded by old Thomas, the Proteus figure. Eventually, upon seeing the lighthouse's fire, he sees something so incomprehensible that he falls back down the winding stairs and ends lying upon a rock, with the seagulls of sailors past pecking at his body. But Eggers doesn't settle for the parallels alone. Prometheus was also known as a creator, having moulded humanity out of clay. But young Thomas is a destroyer of human life. Instead of a greater god like Zeus being his downfall, he is his own downfall. He exhibits a human taking on a god's role. He seeks knowledge not for others, but for himself. He intrudes upon this mini society and destroys it from the inside. His hubris is greater than Prometheus's, and it is the world that enacts vengeance. So what about the actual lighthouse itself? Does it simply represent the creative knowledge that Prometheus endowed on the world? Or does it serve as a shining beacon of obsession that is used to elevate the conflict and claustrophobia of the two lead characters? That is the purpose of all of Ego's mythology. It simmers under the surface, twists into the mind, and exacerbates the most basic conflict of the story. In this case, the power struggle between old and young lighthouse keepers. And thus, the mythology has been built upon to form Eggers' own. Through his research-heavy approach, Eggers manages to retain the essential truth of the mythology and folklore he draws from, whilst placing them in conversations of madness, Jungianism, femininity, and Puritan Catholicism. As a result, the use of the mythology in The Witch and the Lighthouse inspire insight, not spectacle. Rather than using it as a crutch, the mythology is built upon. And instead of abusing the mythology, Robert Eggers respects it.